Welcome everyone. Today we'll have a guide for Anders the Weekly Wolf Boss. The Weekly Wolf Boss is located on the south side of Mondstadt and it's unlocked after the Adventure Level 21 with Razor's Quest. You can see there's a lot of good items to be dropped, also legendary gears and also lots of the crafting materials. Now before we go into the replays for this boss, I'll go through the boss phases and also the change of skills with the boss. The first phase of the boss have a few basic attacks. This includes a delayed force arrow jump attack with a medium rage and size. Followed by that, there is a fast charge attack where the boss actually leaves behind a force damage trial. And followed by that, there is a quick swipe attack which is a melee range attack. This is a pretty straightforward phase as long as you know those three attack patterns and they usually rotate. Just keep in mind of those and you shouldn't be taking a lot of damage from him. After getting the boss to 50% HP, what you're going to see is the boss is going to start running in circles and after running for a few laps, it's going to charge at us. Now as the boss charges at us, it's going to leave another force damage trial so you can't stay where you are and you'll be knocked over of course. This is quite a sizable number of damage if the boss hits you and if you've land on the force trial. But knowing that we can cancel the charge with a correct timing charge shot towards the boss can be really helpful. Usually the boss is going to run around and charge at you for 2 or 3 times and this whole process is going to repeat. Until he stops charging, he's going to go into the phase 2. The boss transforms at phase 2. What's going to happen is he's going to use the old attack patterns and also a few new attacks. The few attacks to be aware of is going to be the first one, Rain of Force Bot. So there's going to be random circle appearing on the floor and we're going to be trying to dodge those. Second to that, the boss can do a small shock wave around himself. This is relatively short ranged and it's more for melee characters. One of the more deadly combos with a wolf boss is actually his force pathing and triple fire attack combo. So what it does is he split out a path of force that slows you and if you get slowed the triple fans is going to slice through us and do quite a bit of AoE damage. In order to dodge that what we want to do is we want to run at 90 degrees towards the boss so this way we don't directly get hit by the force pathing that slows us down. And then after that, we want to dodge sideways against the fans. Now if you run towards the fans, this is not going to help. I tried that before, so running sideways is the best way. Finally, if the fighting phase 2 lasts long enough, the boss is going to start to deal AoE damage and this will cover almost the entirety of the screen. So what we can do is, we can consider running towards the edge of the map and also between some of the four statues. I'll demonstrate this in the replay, but during the time, if you can do enough damage to the boss, this phase or this particular damage pattern usually won't come in. Now if you guys haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to join us. We have a lovely community and also I'll be looking for more news, builds, tips and locations all about the game. And you can see my previous videos were really dedicated for Genshin Impact. Here I'll be using two of my replays, with the level 51 and also level 60 boss. As we can see, the boss is going to start with his nice CGI as he comes into the game. So keep in mind, ranged heroes do have an advantage against the boss because a few of his attacks, um, melee attacks. And I shot there, you can see that Venti shooting his amino arrow at the boss is actually immune. So that's why we strip into Fessel here. And as you can see, this is when the boss did a charge attack. The charge attack is quite quick, and if you are just greedy with damage with your ranger attack, units, what's going to happen is he's going to hit you, knock you over, and you're going to land on the force part thing, and that's going to do more damage if you stay there. So we're going to try to cut the boss a little bit, nothing too special. If we're keeping our distance, the boss can't hit us with a swipe attack, but he can still jump at us, and also he can still do the charge attack, so keep that in mind. So this is one of his swipe attack, it's quite melee range, and you can see that I'm not really vulnerable to that if I'm using a range character. But what I'm vulnerable is the charge attack. So keep in mind, don't get too greedy with hitting him, always keep it on the moonwalk. And this is the third attack I was talking about. It starts with an AoE area and there's a small delay. As long as you get out of the AoE, you're okay. But if you don't, make sure you dodge. And what's, what's going to happen is the boss is going to slam over and it's going to knock you over if you stay there. Keeping mobile is the essential part for the first phase. And as you can see over there, I tried to test the force damage because I test amino damage, it doesn't work. Force damage also doesn't work on the boss. So slowly you can get the boss down after recognizing those attack patterns. They are not very difficult because they are quite standard. But as you get the boss down below 50% or 50%-ish, he's going to start his charge attack. Notice that he leaves behind a trial of force behind him on the outer skirts of the field. You don't want to go to the outer sides because that will deal damage to you. 
Stay in the middle. And now start to be aware. The boss is gonna stop. The moment he stops, he's gonna charge directly towards us like this. What you wanna do is you want to run sideways or dodge sideways. If you want run towards him or try to hit him, it's not gonna be easy. But we can try that. So I'm running sideways and we avoided the first dodge. What I want to show you guys is the potential to actually shoot the boss before he charges at us. It's a little harder to catch, but notice here, I shot at him, he stopped charging at me. I cancelled one of his charges. He right going to the next face attack. So basically he's gonna to try to charge at us three times. And if you happen to be able to cancel him once, well, one less charge, right? It's not the biggest deal, but here I didn't get onto him because you know it's a little harder to catch him because it's hard to predict the angle he charges at us. But even if you don't, after three charges, it's gonna go into the next phase, which is, is the transformation phase. Damage will rank up and you'll be a little like puzzled or like a little surprised by how much he hits at this moment. So he does a bit of the AoE attack with around his radius and now he's gonna ring off the four spots. The four spots are rendered. You can see there, they're kind of all over the place, but at least one of them will be targeted towards your character. So what that means is you always want to be moving. So there you go. While the force boss is casting, he will always try to attack you with other spells. And this is one of the triple fans I was talking about. So while you're dodging the force boss, you also need to be aware of his spells. Now I'm getting too close ranged, he's gonna melee attack me. He can melee attack you in the front with his fans and also swipe you with his tails. So if you hit it at the front and the back, you still are vulnerable to melee attacks. Not a big deal until he goes into the next part of the combos. Let's have a look what happens when he combos us. Keep in mind, while staying melee, boss has an AoE attack that does a wave of force, so like this. So notice that if I was too close to him and too greedy on the AoE melee attack, he's gonna hit me around him. But if I'm a little far away from him, maybe medium distance away from him, this wouldn't hit. So that's good to know if you're playing on a range character. This is when he starts his combos. They start with a trial first. If you happen to be running towards him or right in front of him, you're gonna get slowed down. And after he slows you down, he's gonna slam down and do the triple fan attack. So triple fan attack, basically three shock waves that propels towards you that also spreads out. What you want to do is you want to run sideways. If you can't get out, get out. if you can't get out of it, try to dodge and dash out of it. And this is pretty much most of the phases in the second phase. There is one massive damage dealing potential from the boss, but it's possible that if you do enough damage, you can avoid it. Notice here I didn't dodge with the Fang. If I don't dodge the Fang, he's gonna hit me and it does quite a bit of damage. Here I actually came over to try to break them. I can't really, but what happens is, notice the boss is start to cast his AoE massive radius damage. And during this time, I had to tank this whole thing. I wasn't sure what was happening, but if you look closely here, Notice there could be distance between the statues and if you run towards the statue, perhaps you can dodge that or run behind the statue. During my time, I was able to kind of notice the statue have a gap in between. This is what I assume we can do. I haven't tested how to dodge this exactly because on my second trial, I was able to kill the boss before he casted this. The only time this happened, it was because I was spending five minutes just running in circles in the boss and he got really angry. He started doing his AOEs. So normally speaking, if you just on par with the power level, I don't think you'll get to that phase. But even if you do, try to remember that this boss is not too difficult before the phase, and when he AoE shockwaves you, rotate between the characters and let them take damage evenly, and then use potions. Now I'm still trying to figure out what exactly we can avoid that particular move. For my opinion, I think we can come to the corner and just dodge that. But if that is not the case, we can try to hide behind the statue. If the force statue is broken down, maybe it reduces the damage. So that part, I'm not sure. I have to let you guys know. Because in my two attempts at the boss, the first attempt, I was just taking damage and testing it. The second attempt at level 60, I wasn't even there. Boss never got to use that skill. In order to focus on the second phase of the boss in more detail, I'll show you guys the replay for the second phase of level 63 as well. This is actually my real fight with the boss for this week. So I just got to the adventure level 35 and I decided to do the highest level boss. As you can see, I'm constantly moving. I'm trying to avoid the four spots. And it's quite important that we don't take that much damage in case we need to heal. The ice statues has start to build on the corners of the map, as you can see. So I'm using gem, running sideways to dodge it. 
and I do know that my normal attack is quite high, so I want to get closer to just get Jin to deal the most damage. Unfortunately, all of my ultimates except Vessel doesn't work against the boss because they are MNO or Cryo, so my team is really disadvantaged against him. There you go, one range is five, and this is his combo. Notice I was too greedy. I got combo by the slow, then the triple fang got me. But one thing to keep in mind, I did use the cheap food, so I got 100 armor and I got about 200 attack bonus for food buffs. So I did use food buffs here, so I am a little more durable than normally. Now in the previous video, I was not using any items, I was just testing for damage and mechanics. Notice I'm behind the boss, trying to hit him from behind, and he just slammed me, he's like, get out of here, <laughs> kick me away. So triple fang, triple fang again, try to keep my distance. And here, what I'm thinking is, was like, what if he does the you know AOE shockwave? But fortunately enough, we can do enough damage to avoid that. And this time with the ice force, I ran sideways, and that didn't slam me. <laughs> but this time was this slow. So yes, even knowing the mechanics, it's possible to make the mistakes. But I feel this boss is less punishing compared to the other ones. So as he start to charge up, what's going to happen is it's going to signal the force bots are coming. This is going to combine with all the other attacks. So just a uh, small hiddens for us to be dodging those. But as long as you can do enough damage, the boss is not like the dragon, which always changes faces, changes platforms, and the mechanics are a little more awkward. So here, as long as you continue to do damage to the boss and know the mechanics, you should not take that much damage that your potion cannot heal you. And here we go. Let's, let me show you guys what we got for the level 35 boss. And opening the loot, and I'm looking for something that is golden. I look around, I was like, is there anything golden? I was like, oh my gosh, there's nothing golden, there's three purple. So very unfortunate, we did not get any great loot. I was looking for the purple crafting gears, I was looking for a golden artifact. Unfortunately, we didn't get on this one, but what I'll do is I'll show you guys our level 35 run with the dragon, and hopefully we'll get something good on that one. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also click the bell for more videos like this to come. As always, I wish you guys best of luck in Gatring and also have a great time exploring this beautiful world. I'll see you guys next time. Take care everyone.